about photons. Photon is a packet of light. Okay. Um, so instead of thinking of light as a wave, this is going to be thinking of light as a particle. So instead of imagining your flashlight sending out lots of waves, imagine it sending out lots of teeny tiny packets of light. These are photons. Well, this particle has energy. The energy of that particle is given by something called Planck's constant, which is h, times the frequency of light. Now, because a photon is so small, we're going to measure energy in tiny, tiny units. So we're going to measure energy in something we call electron volts. So we're measuring energy in electron volts. One electron volt is just 1.6 times 10 to the negative 9 joules. An electron volt is a measurement of energy just like joules is. It just happens to be extremely small so that it fits the scale of what we're talking about. Photons are tiny, 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 tiny packets of light. So. <clears throat> every energy of light corresponds to a certain frequency. So let's go ahead and let's label everything here. The E is energy. H is Planck's constant. Max Planck was a physicist. He's a very smart man. Planck's constant. And Planck's constant, the one that we're going to use um, it's 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15th, it's negative 15 electron volts times seconds. And frequency, that's our F, is going to be measured in hertz, or 1 over seconds. <clears throat> so, um, this is how we use that. Now, each frequency of light corresponds to a different color or a different range of things. <clears throat> we don't always talk about light in terms of frequency, though. Sometimes we talk about light in terms of wavelength. So, if we remember that V equals frequency times wavelength, um, and we plug that into here, well, and we remember that the speed of light is a constant. 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So radio waves, microwaves, um, infrared light, red light, orange light, yellow light, uh, green light, blue light, indigo light, and violet light, moving on into ultraviolet, moving into x-rays, moving into gamma rays. <clears throat> All of that light moves at 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So if we take these things, plug them into our Planck's constant equation, <clears throat> the energy of a given photon of light is going to be Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by that wavelength of light. So let's just take a really quick example and look at it. Let's say we have 400 nanometer light. That's how physicists talk about light. Now what that means is 400 times 10 to the negative ninth meters is the wavelength of our light. And we want to know the energy of that. Well, the energy of that is going to be Planck's constant, 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15th the electron volts times seconds times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by the wavelength, 400 times 10 to the ninth meters. 
that's going to give me an energy. Now, before we calculate it, if we just look at the units, um, seconds, sorry, seconds crosses out with the per seconds over there. Meters in wavelength crosses out with the meters in the meters per second. And so the energy for this light, as we put it in, comes out to be roughly 3.11 electron volts. That's the energy that corresponds to 400 nanometer light. Um, photon emission. So this is the this is the Bohr model of the atom. So what we have is the nucleus in the center and then each one of these um, concentric circles on the outside are energy levels. So N equals 1 is the ground state. It's the lowest energy electron can have inside of this particular atom. N equals 2 is the next highest. N equals 3 is the next highest after that. <clears throat> now, um, what makes this sort of new and different is that Bohr said electrons can only have exactly You only have exactly the amount of energy that corresponds to this level. So, in the ground state, an electron can have negative 12 electron volts of energy. Um, that means the electron can't have negative 11, can't have negative 12.5. It has to have exactly negative 12 electron volts. <clears throat> the reason these voltages, I'm sorry, the reason these energies are negative is because the closer and closer an electron gets to the center of the nucleus, um, the less and less energy it has. And so a free electron, we'll write this up here, a free electron has an energy of zero electron volts. As it gets trapped, as it gets pulled in closer and closer and closer and closer to um, the nucleus, it loses energy, which means it has to have negative energy. Okay, So, electrons can only move between these discrete steps. It's a quantized energy jump. Okay, Now, um, this picture here <clears throat> is how most physicists look at the Bohr model of the atom. So when you see an energy, um, energy level diagram, this is what I mean. When I say energy level diagram, this is what I mean. So I'm going to write that down. energy level diagram. This is what an energy level diagram is. So, in photon emission, okay, electrons lose energy they move closer to the nucleus, so they fall um, from n equals 3 to n equals 2 to n equals 1, and when they do that, a photon is emitted. <clears throat> a photon is a packet of light. and it's pure energy. So in order for an electron to move from n equals 3 to n equals 2, it has to lose energy. The place that energy goes is this photon of light. <clears throat> so as an electron falls from n equals 3 to n equals 2, it loses energy. Its change in energy as it falls is the difference between these two energy levels. So if the electron had 4 electron volts and it now has negative 9 electron volts, the change in energy is 5 electron volts. So in order to fall, that means the photon, um, 
the ejected photon has an energy equal to 5 electron volts. So in order for an electron to fall from the n equal 3 state to the n equal 2 state, <clears throat> it kicks out 5 electron volts of energy inside of this photon, which moves away at the speed of light. <clears throat> Another transition that can occur is moving from the n equals 3 state all the way down into the n equals 1 state. If that's the case, my photon is going to have an, in, uh, an energy. The photon energy is going to be, oh, that's a terrible eight, eight electron volts. And then if we only fall between two and one, the ejected photon has an energy of three electron volts. Now, these are the only possible transitions in this atom. So these three photons, five electron volts, eight electron volts, and three electron volts, are the only light that will ever come out of this atom. This is how we get all sorts of light. We'll talk about what an electron volt is specifically in our last slide, but um, for now, just think of it as a measurement of energy. But these are the only three energies of light that are going to be able to escape from this atom. Because these are the only three energy transitions possible. We're not going to see four electron volts. We're not going to see nine electron volts because that is, not a, that is not a possible transition. That is not a possible energy for an electron to get rid of. So that's emission. This can go the other direction, and that's called photon absorption. So here, electrons gain energy by absorbing or taking in by absorbing a photon and they move up a level or move up multiple levels. So, and moving up energy levels. So, <clears throat> this works in reverse. Here we have incoming energy hitting an electron. So let's pretend we have an electron just hanging out right here, okay? And let's say we have three photons of light, three packets of light coming in. All right, let's say that the first one is a four electron volt photon. The second one is a three electron volt photon. And the third one is a two electron volt photon. All three of these are going to pass through. Now, for an electron in the ground state, it can do a couple of things. It can jump up to n equals 2. If that's going to happen, my photon needs an energy exactly of 3 electron volts. Or it can jump straight up to n equals 3. And if that's the case, my photon needs an energy of 8 electron volts. So looking here, the 4 electron volt photon, if it's absorbed by this electron, okay would make the electron go from negative 12 electron volts to negative 8 electron volts. Well, that's below this energy level. So that 4 electron photon is going to pass through. It's not going to interact with that electron at all. The 3 electron volt photon, however, if I, if I take 12 electron volts and add 3 electron volts to it, Negative 12 electron volts plus 3 electron volts gives me negative 9 electron volts. Well, that is an energy level. So that, that photon would have the ability to be absorbed by this electron, kicking it up into the n equals 2 level. So that one's going to be absorbed. It's not going to come out. And then we have the 2 electron volt photon. Well, 2 electron volts takes me to 
Well, negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10 electron volts. That is not an exact energy level, so that's going to pass out as well. 2 electron volts passes through without doing anything. The only photons that absor are absorbed are ones that correspond exactly to differences in energy levels. Only photons that have exact energies are absorbed. Otherwise, they pass through unaffected. So, photon absorption is an electron gaining energy. So, if something in the n equals 2 state gains energy, all right, so say that 9 electron volt electron absorbs a 5 electron volt photon, it's going to jump up to this level. But if it absorbs a 6, it's not going to happen because that's not exactly an energy level. That's photon absorption. Now, we're going to talk about electron volts and their relationship to light.